and welcome to Day One Patch Podcast, episode 225. Uh, we've been, took like three weeks off, I think it was. No, two, right? Well, three, because we had to need the week in between. What are you talking about? So the podcast airs. Yeah. There's a week. Yeah. I miss it. Okay. There's a week. I miss it. Wait. There's a week, and now we're here. That's three weeks. Yeah, but, yeah, but we missed two episodes. We missed two episodes, but three weeks. It's been three weeks. It's been three weeks. No, wait, wait a second here. No, no hang on a <laughs> no, minute here. No, hang on a minute here. We gotta, we gotta. Now we have a, we have a par- we have a timeline paradox here because if you, th- you're telling me that one, ep- one podcast episode is two weeks. That's that's what you're trying to say no, right now. No, no. So then, then what the heck? What, what the heck is your? What the hell are you talking about there? You guys had an episode. There hasn't been a new podcast in three weeks. We've entered a paradox, ladies and gentlemen. No, we haven't. No. We've entered a paradox. No, it, it sounds weird if we do a weekly show, you miss two shows, you're like, oh, man, must be, uh, must have missed, missed two weeks. No, we've, no, no. We've not been here in my house for three weeks. Well, I me even longer. Yes. What? I missed the one episode, the last episode you guys recorded. I right. was not there. Yeah. So. Here's what I'm saying. The episode, oh, God. The, here the, we go. The episode airs. Terminator timelines. Here we go. This isn't difficult. The episode airs. A week passes. Yeah. There's not an episode. Okay. A week passes. Okay. There's not an episode. All right. A week passes. Uh-oh. This episode happens. A week pa- A week passes and this episode happens. How many weeks passed? Three weeks passed. There you go. Two episodes, three weeks. But, but what's really fucked up about this, and it isn't actually <laughs> fucked up, it just sounds <laughs> fucked up, is that if you have one week of podcast, it's one week of content. But if two weeks pass and you miss two weeks, it's three weeks have passed. See, isn't that weird? <laughs> That's weird, right? <laughs> Although, wait, maybe it's maybe it's more like like just saying that out loud sounds weird. But essentially, what you're saying is like this is the third podcast in a set of three in which two were missed. So therefore, two weeks. No, wait a second. You know what I'm actually doing in my head is I'm we're covering the previous week. Yeah. So essentially we missed two weeks of content. Yeah. Because we are an a, we are a week recap show. Yes. Well, goddamn. <laughs> I don't even know if that right if that's right. I just said yes. Um surprisingly, not a lot of good stories in the news. Come on, Ryan. For Christ's sake. Adrian and, and made us three documents. I You're the person that put it together. I appreciate that, but it wasn't it was either like information that wasn't really relevant today. Or just today has to be today's no no we got a three week period you just said I'm tapping the the yes, change on this table here but something that happened three weeks ago isn't relevant today yeah it is no it's not I and, just unless, I just unless, today watched the full Red Dead trailer unless the story continues I just today watched the full Red Dead trailer. yeah but the Red Dead trailer is no longer in the zeitgeist. Every time someone says that I think Poltergeist immediately <laughs> and then I immediately don't care about what zeitgeist means. <laughs> It's. I know that's weird, but it's just. It just means like in the public thinking sphere, like what everyone is thinking about. The public's thinking sphere. So when the next, this, mar- I, wait, I haven't wait. watched Black Mirror at all, and it just sounds like a Black Mirror episode. The Captain Marvel trailer launches. Okay. okay. The Captain Marvel trailer is now in the zeitgeist because everyone is now thinking about the Captain Marvel trailer. So if I go up to some guy in the coffee shop okay. who looks like a nerd. And I say, what do you think of that Captain Marvel trailer? Yeah. He's going to know because it's in the zeitgeist. Now, what, yeah, but what if I go up to him and go, yo, I just caught up on that Red Dead trailer. He would be, he'd be like, yo, that's pretty good, You right? can do that, but it's probably not anywhere in his mind at that time. I'm pretty sure he's going to remember the Red it. Dead trailer. He's going to remember it, yes, but it's gone out of the zeitgeist. I'll accept that one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> we already had two conflicts in the beginning of the fucking... Oh, man. All right, some of the news we do have. Um, now, this one is an older story, but I put it in there just because I thought it was interesting. And I don't, I don't think we talked about this, but this has been an ongoing debate about um, cross-play. And Sony has finally come out and said what they thought about the Fortnite controversy, about how you need different Epic accounts. Oh, Christ. If you're playing on a oh, Switch and a PS4, or an yeah. Xbox One and a PS4. Uh, so we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, you Actually, I have, know. A, I have a question for that when it comes up. I just thought of one. Okay. Remember it. I will remember it because it's it's kind of serious, actually. I just I'm going to be worried about it the whole time now. In other news, we have PUBG, apparently, coming to PS4 soon. Uh, I heard about that. That's pretty good. Although I won't be buying it or playing it. 
Um, Sony also announced a PlayStation Classic, which is very reminiscent of the Nintendo Classic series of of old consoles. AC adapter sold separately. <laughs> yeah. Um, it only includes 20 games. And they've only announced five. So there's big speculation on what the other 15 are going to be. Uh, I guess we'll hear, be hearing that soon. I think one of them is going to be uh, that... Um, what the hell is that thing? Gex? It's like the, ge- oh. the you know what I'm talking about. It's like yeah. the spy that's like the the gecko. Yeah. And PlayStation has now added downloading of PS4, PS2 games via PlayStation Now. Where's my PlayStation 3 at? <laughs> and we also have a query corner question. But like, like, oh, I added a byline to each of those stories. Yeah. Actually, that was all right. I didn't <laughs> mind that. What's new, Matt? What's happening? Um, what's, so, what's in your zeitgeist? guys? Well, Adriano and I just beat the following. Dying like the following. So. You kind of like did Adriano though. Adriano may have. So what? <laughs> what it is is basically. Um, do you care about spoilers? No, because I'll probably never play that. Okay, well I'm probably gonna spoil it here, possibly. So just a warning to the listeners. So at the end, I think as in the first game as well, the original game, the last mission is actually a single player mission, and when you do it, it says like you're, we're gonna pull you out of multiplayer. So I did it, and I was pissed off like. <laughs> It was so... I kept, like, fucking up because it wasn't clear where to drive. And, like, we weren't doing a lot of side quests and we weren't doing any races or anything. So my buggy wasn't great. And Adriano's wasn't upgraded at all. So, like, I was doing a little bit, but, like, it like we were, we were playing, like, Adriano plays where we don't really hit a lot of the side missions and stuff like that. Like, the stuff that's out of the way. Mm-hmm. Now, the whole structure of this... Th- this, is, this, is, this is where we kind of came into a, a problem, is the whole structure of the DLC is... There's like a cult uh, slash religion slash group of people that we're trying that you're trying to gain reputation with. To do that, you can do main missions, um, but like they're finite. So it'll be like there's one main mission comes up, you get like a hundred reputation, and then to gain more to gain to unlock another story mission, you have to do side missions. But the ones with the car, like the like the ones where we would upgrade the car, weren't giving enough reputation with the faction or whatever, like the cult, whatever. So what ended up happening was, is we weren't doing those and it wasn't a problem until about 80% through. And then we just got to the point where like these zombies were just absolutely kicking our ass. They were just like destroying us in every way possible. It was, it was a mess actually. Um, I ended up upgrading slightly and I like leveled up enough to get more armor. So like we were able to make it through, but it was like, I can definitely see like if I was playing it myself, I like, and I mean, admittedly, like the game got really monotonous, so I don't even think I would have beaten it. Like, it's probably a good thing that we did it Adriano's way because it's like, it's like, honestly, there's not many missions because we, we almost have 100% complete. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I think I would have done more of the races and stuff to get my buggy up because that, that kind of interests me. But then I probably, I may have quit myself. So it's like, there's like this weird balance just personally where personally, I would have did more side missions and then probably not completed the game. But then we did it Adriano's way, and then we struggled more, but we actually ended up getting through it, so that's all right. Um, I don't know if Adriano got his through, because his buggy wasn't upgraded at all, and since he was separated for the first time, I beat it after three tries of the last mission. I beat it. Stupid ending. The stupid... Oh, man. you get, you get get. It's like one of those endings where you get to make a choice. Stupid mm. ending. Real dumb. You want me to just tell you what the ending is? Sure. So there's this... I'm just going to tell you this basic synopsis. Basically, out in the country, there's a cult... Um, a cult slash religion slash following thing. That's why it's the called following? following. Yeah, literally. Ah. And literally, then these guys are basically like immune to the virus. Like the zombies don't come after them and whatever. And you find out it's because of this like blue powder, mist, whatever it is. You find out that that's actually like a military experiment in which they, in which, like it's a military experiment in which like the military was using it to fight off the virus, like to keep zombies away. But, there's the, uh, but at the end of the game, like so, basically you're trying to like get in with this cult, and then there's like the mother, which is the main person. If I if I'm remembering the lore of the first game correctly, do you remember in one of the cutscenes, or maybe it's even in the game, somebody says there's like a witch that walks through the zombies and she doesn't get hurt. Yeah, and she vaguely. walks through. I think it's her. I think I think the witch is the mother. I think. Okay. So basically, it's like her, but she always wears a mask. And like so, there's like you know, it's kind of like uh, like everyone wears like these sun masks and stuff like this, right? So it's a very like. Uh, like it's very like hush hush, you know what I mean? It's like they won't tell you unless they trust you, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So basically, what ends up happening is you meet the mother at the end, and she's actually a volatile. She's actually one of those volatiles that's actually sentient, 
And what had happened was is she drank a vial rather than inhaled the the blue mist. She actually drank, so it was direct. Mm. But at night, she still goes, like, crazy. turns into a volto, and she she killed all of her children and everything. Oh. Like, she went fucking crazy. Jesus. So then you get to choose what to do. You get to choose whether to take the blue stuff back to Haran, because Haran's basically in trouble. That's what the premise is. So it's like, we're in trouble. We know that we think the country's okay. Go to the country, see if you can get help from these these guys. So... Basically, you get to choose whether you get, whether you nuke Haran and the countryside, or whether you take you take the blue vials or not. And um, I did the nuke because <laughs> once it was like, oh, the cure is to get Voltos. And she said that even if you breathe it in, like if you breathe the stuff in, you are you are just slowly transforming into what she is. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm blowing this shit up then. So that's what I did. That was my ending. Mm-hmm. Um, the ending was okay. Uh, but I I would just say that that game that game is like su- like uh, the game is really weird or the DLC is really weird because the base game is all about parkour and there's not much of that <laughs> in the following because it's more open so like the whole thing about the following was that there's cars but there's no modern GPS system like there are in games where the road trail is actually shown mm-hmm. so basically what they have is this very sparse big countryside it's very dangerous because they put keep putting like like toxic stuff on the road lots of zombies lots of obstacles because there's like roadblocks from when the they were trying to fight off the infection and lots of those like exploding guys like the boomers essentially so your 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 cart gets all damaged and stuff from this right because it's there's all these things but there's no modern gps system so you're kind of driving aimlessly and if you make a wrong turn like because it's the countryside there's huge cliffs there's mountains, there's huge like creeks and stuff. There's forests you can get stuck in. Like we got stuck in a forest one time. It was a disaster. Like like the driving, I, I, I read one guy saying that the driving sucked. And I didn't really get that until about 60 or 70% of the game. I was like, the driving in this kind of sucks. Like I don't know whether it's because I didn't level up my Jeep much, but it needs a modern GPS system. Like if they wanted this to focus like if they want this to focus on the fact that you're driving. It's weird that you have this really nice parkouring system, and then the fir- like the original game focuses on parkour to complement the system. Then it's like, hey, we're gonna make a good driving thing where you can like upgrade your thing and everything. But then they don't update the mechanics to accommodate for the fact that you're not running somewhere; you are literally driving at a high speed through a dangerous countryside. Mm-hmm. It needs a GPS, like it needs it. I think because uh, that's just like a modern game mechanic. So right. that that's one major gripe I have with it. Because I, I, I had to have Adriano hop in the back of my buggy because we each had a buggy. But he would hop in mine and he would direct me in the map because I couldn't fucking see the map and drive and avoid stuff. Like it was just it was just hectic as hell. So that that's my one complaint. And it it went on for a bit too long. Like it like I said, it was a little like repetitive. That's what I mean by if if I had done it the way I did it, I probably would have got like 60 percent of the way and stopped. <coughs> so but yeah, so now. Dying Light is done. I didn't play the other DLCs. Like, I have the, all of them. I didn't bother with the prison or whatever else. Maybe I think there's like a stadium or something else. I haven't checked it out. But I think I'm done with the original Dying Light now. I've done the two major campaigns, and I've platinumed the first game. So, <laughs> yeah, right. like, I'm, I've, I've, done, I've had my fill <laughs> of Dying Light. So I'm ready for the second one now. Yeah. So that's my... That was my time. Oh, I also bought Spider-Man, which I have hardly through. And then I tier 100 and got m- all my unlocks for... See for the season for Fortnite. So ready for the next one. I found. I think I have the season pass for Spider Man. You have the season pass for Spider Man. I think so because I, I looked, like the season pass went up on the store and I saw it and I think it said it was already like in my like I already had it. Like, Did you buy the deluxe? Yeah, I you think so. season pass. Yeah, I have that too. It's pretty good. I I, I got it because the one piece of See, DLC is supposed to come out in October. October. Yeah, like, super quick. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really liking Spider Man. I spent about sixty percent of my time in the freaking photo mode. Right. I like jump in, jump well, in. I'm at like an angle. I'm like, oh man, I'll grab the photo mode and see how this looks. Yeah. And I'm constantly messing around. Got a bunch of pictures and stuff. So. Yeah, I finished it in about like a week. I could see that. Like I could definitely I, see people rushing through it. I was, I was kind of rushing it just because Tomb Raider was coming out the next week. You know, and I didn't want to put Tomb Raider on the back burner while I was finishing Spider Man. I can I. <sighs> And I, I, this I, is what I'm trying to avoid in the, for the next months. Yeah. But, but I played like almost all of Spider-Man. Did I, you, I, collect, did you I, collect, I collected everything. I did all the research centers. 
and all that stuff. I haven't platinumed it, but how did you not platinum if you did everything? Not I haven't done everything, but I've done like all the important stuff. Okay, I think I think I want to platinum it. Actually, I'm going to try to. It's like a traditional open world game. I haven't looked at the the trophies because I'm afraid of spoilers. But uh, I haven't looked at the trophies. But people were saying that people were able to platinum it already. Like re- yeah. like so, it's kind of like you know your standard open world. One formula. thing I, one thing I don't like is there. Have you met the task taskmaster yet? No. So the taskmaster just gives you tasks. Okay. Okay. Um, I hate stuff like that. I can't stand it. Taskmaster. It, 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 well, I don't like tasks in games. I know that sounds a little ridiculous. It but just gives you missions? It, it'll be like, follow this drone throughout New York City and fly through these little like beacons. Oh, these, I hate those sh- these that blue shit, beacons yeah. that he leaves behind. And you have to do it within 30 seconds. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you don't, you fail. And it's just like, well, well that's not fun. That's not fun, yeah. Far Cry did it with the stupid planes and stuff. You got to fly through these circles. And it was just like... This is so annoying. I don't know who has fun with these. Who likes these challenges? They're not good. This is this is something that I'm that I'm interested in with I mean, I read the mm-hmm. there's a string of comments from Jeff Keeley about Red Dead. And I think one of the things that like Red Dead 2 specifically. And what I what I specifically am looking forward to in these games is I don't want you to say what activities can I do? Because the activity I don't want to it's almost like a mini game collection at that point. I don't like that. The my favorite part of Far Cry 5 was that I was just like, I would just sometimes like hop out of my car and be like, I don't want to drive. This is like rough terrain. I don't want to drive. So I would just like run out in the woods. You know, I'd be like hunting and stuff. Like I'm walking toward my objective, but I'm like hunting and stuff. I'd find a random pond. I'd go fishing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think of fishing as like press triangle to start fishing and then start fishing. Or like sometimes I would find like a river and be like, oh, there's like some weird island over there and there's just so happens to be a boat here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, you know, boat over there and see what's going on. I did. I walked mostly in Far Cry 5 actually. Mm -hmm. I hate the and I even like and I understand this is more mini gameish, but I don't mind this like the the fishing tournament or the fishing records in the different areas, like there's records uh, record sizes of fish yeah. in each of the like territories or whatever they are. I don't mind that because that's immersive. That's like you know they did they did, people do that you know there's like fishing tournaments and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm fine with that, but I'm not okay with like drive through the hoops. Like, why? But why am I driving through these hoops? That's stupid. <laughs> right. like, like, it takes me right out of it. Now I'm just like, okay, now let's get them the most amount of points. Mm-hmm. You know, that's stupid. I don't want to do that. It's a very classical kind of game mechanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very old or something. What's amazing about that Jeff Keighley tw- uh, like Twitter thread is that he's, he said, like, for the first time in his, his 25 years of covering games, a developer sat him down in front of the game and asked him, what do you want to do? I think that's incredible. It's I, not I like, always, I always get, always get skeptical about yes, those comments because I, it's I, like, I, it's like Jeff Keighley also already knows what the game's about, so he probably has an activity in his mar- in his mind. I, I'm skeptical too, but I'm just saying, like, for that to be, for the instead of a developer saying, okay, you're gonna go raid this tomb, you know, yeah, 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 go enter that little zone there, and you can, you can go through one of our challenge tombs, you know, this was here's an open world, what do you want to do in it? That's like to give the to give a, a person on the press the freedom to go just run off into the world, you know, is pretty pretty incredible. It's like it sounds really good. That my because my, typically they want to control the narrative, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And they want to show off the best part of their game, and and that's what they'll take back and report to all their their followers. Yeah. Um. So to let you make your own decisions on what you want to see in the world is pretty pretty cool. I think I think my main issue with with this game already and i mean played it is that it the timing is is off for me that's and that's not really the game itself's fault mm-hmm. i think it's because they delayed the online for a month and it's like oh well, we're gonna do the you're gonna do the online in november and like you know take the time you need because like fuck it's probably complex as hell um from from what the single player sounds like if the multiplayer is anything like it like jesus yeah but i don't like I'm, i don't want to rush it i don't want to ru- i don't want to rush the story in the first month so I'll just, I don't know, play Spider-Man or something. And I don't want to... Plus, plus the, the beta for Fallout 76 is coming out. And then I assume, and I don't know whether this has been reported already, I assume the beta is going to go basically right to launch because that my progress carries over. Or at least re, at least to, like too very close to launch. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to buy a game in between then because I'm just going to be... Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be playing Fallout 76. Like, that's going to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm going to play it a lot. So I don't, and I, but I don't want to rush Red Dead. That's my problem. Because yeah, I, I don't want to rush and, through this world. And I feel like Red Dead is going to be a big game. Like it's going to be a long, 
That's the problem. And you're going to get sidetracked by all these other side things they're going to be pulling you into and stuff. What I might end up doing is I might end up purchasing Fallout 70... Well, I already pre-ordered Fallout 76 for the console, like for PS4. I might get Red Dead on Red Dead to play with like Nate and them just Red Dead Online on Xbox later. Like after it's out of beta maybe. And then I might... Because I'll be playing 76 on my PlayStation. And then, and then I'll... Maybe like have doubles of the game maybe later or something. I think I'm gonna be okay. I I don't I don't think you are. No, because I because I I, look, I don't. You're rushing games though. No, I'm not gonna rush it because I, I I typically play single player games by myself. Yeah, and I play them on off times when we're not all online. Okay. Right. So I'll usually play them when I get home from work. I'll just start playing a single player game. Yeah. Multiplayer games we play at night, and yeah. so I'll just play Red Dead during the day. And if anyone wants to play Fallout at night, I'll play Fallout. The thing is, though, is is uh, you might be okay with I'm that. Treating, I'm treating Fallout as an online only game, essentially, that I can only play with friends. I see. I feel like I feel like you're not going to be able to do that. You think you're going to level past me and then? Well, there, that that is going to happen because of the beta, right? Like that, it already is going to happen now, which I don't actually think is a major problem. I think they've, I think, I think they've figured out enough. But this is not enough world balancing where the world game balances to you and stuff, mm-hmm. where I don't think that's going to be a problem. Because I otherwise I think they would wipe your progress from the beta. That's just my personal opinion. I don't know if that's true, but I assume it's going to be fine. Plus, I think it's I think it's tricky to to do that because um, it happened even in the division where I wouldn't be the same gear score as you guys and had I couldn't do the same activities. And it's like that was a pain. In this the is ass. a multiplayer game, and you're saying you can't play with this person. It makes sense though because we're we're it's it, think about it right. It's like it's like we're literally improving our character, and you didn't improve it to the same amount. So how else do you do it? Like my damage goes up, my health goes up, and my general skill at the game goes up. Yeah, but the, let's the, say you the, didn't the, do it, so now I'm going down. Like, am I are no, you no, supposed to be the, challenged the, so much that you're gonna get killed every second? No, the, the 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 characters would be like the enemy characters would be leveled to whatever they're fighting. If I'm shooting at them, I do appropriate damage, and if they shoot at me, they do appropriate damage. But as soon as they turn and shoot at you, you know, almost like a Call of Duty thing where it's like, I mean, it's PvP, but it's, no one, none of the guys have more health unless they it's have like all, juggernaut. It's all behind the scenes. Do you know what I mean? That'd be interesting. I think. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. It, it would really depend on how the, on how the difficulty goes up. If the enemy gets more skills, you're kind of fucked. If it's just a damage number, like a damage received and a damage sent. You could do it like percent wise, like you're saying, where it's like, oh, you're this level, you do this percent of damage with this level, with this amount of damage number. And if it is the case where they're like they're more skilled, and they have like maybe more weapons and, and stuff like that, then I'm going to have to play harder. Do you know what I mean? But that's exactly what happens. Is is if if it's a tradi- if it's a traditional game, a traditional RPG, it's like I can boost you up a few levels. So like let's say I'm level thirty, I could maybe get you to level twenty. 20 or like around 20 or like maybe even into the 20s fast because I'm fast tracking you because you're fighting guys that are you know three four four three or four maybe even more times your mm-hmm. strength so then that's how you kind of get like power level right but that also ruins it to an extent because you don't you're not experiencing a generic growth and you're also your skill is not increasing think about think about think about jumping into the division at level 30. And if your character was level 30 and like perfectly geared, well, your character's equipped, but you're certainly not. You don't know the cover tricks. You don't know how to aim perfectly. You don't know what the different char- what the different guys wear. You don't know their weak points. Yeah. That was all learned by us doing missions, playing the game, doing incursions, doing raids, or whatever the hell is you doing that game. But I'm not saying like I'm not saying you're gonna be level forty and I'm gonna be level zero and expecting to play with you. See that yeah, see this is gonna be interesting. I wonder. What I what I might end up doing with Fallout is I may have a a multiplayer character mm. and one I just play by myself. And what I'll maybe do is I might spec that character to be alone. That might that that'd be fine because Marty said he's not going to do the beta, and he said he might not buy. The he game. might not get it with with Red Dead. Yeah, yeah, he might not do it. Um, I'm not doing Red Dead because of it. So, like, we're kind of being divided here, but. I mean, my choice is clear. This is why I just buy everything, and then if someone says, you want to play this, I have it. There you go. <laughs> you know? Well, it's not like I'm being hostile. Like, I mean, we could always right. play Fortnite. We could always play something else. Like, we have, like, five or six other choices, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, we all have Overwatch for the most part. Like, Fortnite's free, for Christ's sake. 
Download now. Right. Like, and um, I finished Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. See, that I feel like you rushed because you actually said like, oh, I'm but not going to jump on Fortnite today. Uh, I'm going to jump on... I'm going to jump on Tomb Raider. Uh, Tomb Raider. Yeah. And then I ended up having to tear you up in Fortnite so you wouldn't miss it. <laughs> yeah. But no, this was this was a genuine playthrough. This is like, both Spider-Man and I did I did rush Spider-Man to an extent. But both Spider-Man and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I played like how I played games in high school. What does that mean? Does Where that I mean? I enjoyed them and so when I left and I stopped playing them, I kept thinking, "Hey, I want to go back and play that game." Okay. And so I would just, I, whenever I had free time, I'd be playing that game instead of watching YouTube or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So it was within the realm of my history of playing single player games. Okay. I, I, used, to, I used to plow through games like this, like, like back in the day. Because I, I would buy everything on, on October and November and December. I'd buy every single like, big AAA game that came out almost. That I had interest in, at least. And I, I, would, I would complete them all. I would have a thing where, like, especially when I was younger... Before working or anything, I would, like, have a thing where I'd maybe buy one. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, admittedly, it would take me almost the whole season to do it. Because games were less systematic back then, I found. I didn't understand the systems, I guess. And then at Christmas, I would get a whole bunch. But there'd be a whole bunch of them that were in that saran wrap for most of the year. And then I would just go and play them. But I never even knew release dates or anything. Now it's, like, everything's important. So, like, what you're doing, like, you're buying it on launch date because that's, like, important now. You know yeah. what I mean? Where it's not like you but not like you waited three months and then were like, oh, I kind of feel like playing Spider-Man. Well, this is what we've talked about this before, too, where all these YouTubers and Twitch streamers and stuff, they get the games from the developers early. And they're playing them either, like, a, a week before or, like, a few days before the game launches. Yeah. And then I feel like I'm, like, I feel like I'm left out. Do you know what I mean? So, even getting a game on launch day, I feel like I'm already missing out what, on what everyone else is already doing. It feels weird to me. Because when when it's the press who does it, it's like that's their job. They're there to review the game and tell me about it. Sure. But when it's Twitch streamers and YouTubers, yeah, they're not necessarily press. They gave those games to them for for their own press. You know, that that was that's a marketing thing when they hand it to some big big Twitch streamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so it just it just doesn't feel the same to me. I would say I only have ever had that experience in recent memory with <coughs> with Fortnite. Because Fortnite, I get involved with the community. I'm on Reddit and stuff. and like looking stuff up. And like if I notice something, I'll look it up and see if anyone else has experienced it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also Fallout 4. Fallout 4, I was watching a lot of like settlement videos and learning how to do stuff like that. Uh, I will say something was almost spoiled for me in Fallout 4. And I immediately like pulled out of there. Like I immediately was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going on Reddit. Until I beat this game, at least. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of like, I mean, quote unquote, fast track the story, but it was still like several days. But so like, I don't know what 76, I kind of want to like, so the problem with 76 is it's like, it's like a, it's like a living world. There's like, you know, I don't know how living it is. Like, we haven't played this game, but uh, you know, it's, it's games as a service in its traditional form, as we know, as, as far as I know. So therefore, how much stuff is going to be unique? Like, like, am I going to get spoilers by keeping up with the community, like you're saying? Like, am I like, if I watch well, that, a Twitch that's, streamer that's that my, comes that, in, that's not my concern. Uh, it's just that, that spoilers on that isn't your concern. You don't think? Not not when I was making that point. It's not the point I was making. What I'm saying is, I used to buy games on launch day and want to play them, so I could be I be quotations here part of the conversation online. Okay. Okay. So it's like when people say, "Oh, I love this mission," I would know what they're talking about. But see, isn't that a spoiler if you don't know what that mission is? That's what I'm afraid of. Yes, that you, that's right. That's a concern, but, but but my more concern is not being part of the conversation. Okay, and so when everyone else is having the conversation before me because they all have the game because they're all big Twitch, Twitch streamers or whatever, you know, I feel like I'm being left out and I had to do it late as a, as a pleb consumer of the game. But you're not actually joining in on the Reddit's and stuff. Like you're not. I'm not, you're not I'm commenting. Not, you're I'm not, not, not commenting, but I like hearing what other people say about it. I like watching spoiler casts. I like watching. Oh, I, like, okay. I like listening to podcasts where they talk about the game and then their their experiences and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not actively tweeting at people or anything like that. But I like just hearing other people talk about it. Yeah. But you are right. It is weird yeah. that, to give out a game early to like press and stuff or, or just YouTubers. And to have them play it, and it's like that is a spoiler. I wonder if there's a lot of people like Tim though. Tim, don't, they I don't find, care. well, Tim, I find he he a few times now has 
gone out and he's like watched a let's play or watched like a, a Twitch streamer play through the whole thing. And then he buys it and goes through the same experiences that that guy did. Like maybe that guy found a glitch. So Tim will like mess around with that glitch <laughs> or he'll like, you know, just go through the game cause he enjoyed it. Whereas for me, my best things in like, I, I actually to bring it back to Spider-Man, not this Spider-Man, but the original Spider-Man two, one of the, and like I didn't have internet, so I don't know if it was a secret, but one of the secrets that I found as a kid was if you wanted to go to the uh, the Statue of Liberty, there was no clear cut way to get there. But I remember sitting there on the couch one day, and I was like, like watching the watching the route because I was like, I could see the island, and I noticed that there, and it was quite a long time. Again, I was a kid, so God knows how long that was. But it was quite a long time where there's there's like there's like the stat, there's like the Statue of Liberty on an island, and then there's another island near it, and then you're on Manhattan, and I noticed a helicopter kept going back and forth from Manhattan to the other island. So I was like, okay. So I like kind of like web attached to it. Mm-hmm. Like I like swung down on it and I held on to that. And then when I got to the other island, I noticed, oh, there's a helicopter. Again, that takes quite a while to go from the Statue of Liberty to, like, to this island. So I'd go and hooked onto that. And that's how I got there. And that was like a big thing for me back then. So I used to do that all the time. Mm-hmm. But if I had read that, I would have did it once and been like, oh, cool, I'm here. Like with GTA with the heart of the... Liberty, the, the have you ever done that? Inside of the the Statue of Liberty, there's a beating heart. And you can go inside of her, and there's like a beating heart <laughs> in there. It's like the heart of Liberty City or something. But if I did, I found that online. I did it once. Cool, that's it. But if I had found that myself, I'd do it all the time. For, I don't know why. Just be like, oh man, I found this secret. I'm gonna go and fucking it feels, do that. It again. feels like it was your discovery. It feels like it was my discovery. Yeah. So when Fallout 76, if I find like a cool building, I don't want to be shown the building. Even if that's not really a spoiler, I don't want to be shown the building. Mm-hmm. I want to find the building. Right. Like I uh, before I found it, before I did anything uh, in Far Harbor, like I didn't look up anything. I mean, I found like a, a bowling alley, and I found like a, a mini nuke launcher that fires bowling balls. I thought that was hilarious. I went online, of course, people have found it. But now I go back there sometimes because like I found that myself. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's weird, maybe. But I, well, no, I it's just know. more of a personal connection to the, to the stuff. Yeah. 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 So I don't want it taken away. I think. Uh, just my final thoughts on Tomb Raider. Um, it, it's it's her last chapter in her origin story, is what they're calling it. Even though every game has been like, watch Laura Croft become the Tomb Raider. Uh, we've been watching for like nine years now, or however long, <laughs> however long it's been. How long? Or Wait, just five what? years? Five years, I guess. In total, like across all games. Yeah, it was been. But say nine years, no way. No, five years. Um, it's 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 probably the weakest of the the three, which is kind of sad. Can you give them each a rating? Like out of 10? Like each one out of 10? Or you want me to just order them and put them in order? Yeah, do do ten, do out of 10 for each, I'd say. Out of 10 for each? Uh, Jeez. The problem is it like shifted, right? So, so the order I'd put them in shifts the actual numbers. If the original Tomb Raider was, was the only game that was out, I would give it a 9. Like, like the reboot. Okay. But then Rise was better, but it's not a 10. And so I would give the original like an 8 and Rise a 9. No, 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 no. In their in their launch scores. You want me to give them their launch scores? Their launch scores, I'd say. I think that's the fairest way to do it. So you can have two 9s, but say that one's better for you. That makes sense. Because we're disclosing that. <laughs> like, Although nine, 9 might be a little high for the first one. Okay, 8.5. For the number one. For Tomb Raider 2013. Okay. Nine for Rise. Okay. And probably... Nine is, for Rise, well. This is probably going to sound arbitrary, but like a like a, like a 7.8 for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Fuck, eh? God damn it. They couldn't they couldn't stick that landing. Damn no, them. It, it was, it's very close. So that's the problem. So it's not, at, it's not terrible then. Like peop, no, I, I don't I, know. I, people I, seem to be freaking out a little bit. I still, I I still enjoyed my time with it. And it's a really fun game to play. It's a really fun game to go explore in. The challenge tombs are amazing. They're super cool and fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, the costumes sucked this kind of this year. I didn't really like the costumes. Rise had great costumes. Um, the story was a little funky in this one. Which what was a little funky? Story. Oh, they said the store. I was confused. No, the story was a little funky. Like what store was in the other ones? Like... Um. I actually they, they they talked a big thing about the the biggest like hub area okay in all the Tomb Raider games yeah it was a little confusing to find my way around the hub area and, and so I didn't really like that part 
it was it was so big that it got lost in the goddamn thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus. And then they put collectibles and stuff in there, and it's like, is that collectible on like the third platform of the building, or where the hell is it? And then the only way to get up to the third platform is you got to go around the back and uh, and climb up this rock wall and like zip line in. And it's just like, well, well, this is this is horrible, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, overall, it is it is a very fun game, and I I did enjoy my time with it. But I think it's the weakest of the three. And would you say that the landing wasn't stuck, or what, was it? Did they stick the landing? They stuck the landing, but they wobbled. For like a good two seconds, and then and then did their little final pose. All right, <laughs> does that work? That, yeah, I, 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 want, I haven't played the second one too much. I want them to make more though, and I'm afraid they might not. Yeah, has this been said? It's a it's a proper trilogy, and they're not going to make more. Like, what's, Camilla what's, what's Ludington, the status? Camilla Ludington. Now she's not the like one creating the game, but she says there's no. She's always pictured it as a trilogy. Uh, there's wait, no, wait. So what's her job then? She's Laura Croft. Oh, okay. Uh, she's always pictured it as a trilogy. She never signed on for three. It was always make this game. Hey, we're doing another one. Do you want to be in this one? She said yes. Hey, we're doing a third one. Do you want to be in this one? Yes. Right. So that's how it's always been. But uh, she pictured it as three. She said she would like to come back, but it wasn't like I can't wait to come back for a sequel. You know what I mean? How many days of work do you think it is for those type of actors? Well, it's it's still a lot because you still gotta you still gotta rehearse the scenes. Right. You still gotta then film the scenes. You gotta get in the the body suits and get the dots applied, and you gotta learn your lines. And there's a bl- bunch of like ADR they gotta do with the voices and the oofs and the oos and the stuff like that. You know. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm not saying any. They're, I'm they're not they're saying assen- anything against her. I'm, just, I'm curious as how much. How it's much. essentially a movie because they're, they're, they they literally shoot. And, and one thing she brought up is the problem is like. You you think oh it's a it's a it's a video game so they can fix all the mistakes you make on the stage. That's what I was thinking. Like, are they how much how much are the she scenes says, aren't are not filmed? She says that you have to do it right because they're literally tracking everything you're doing. Right. And they want they want the the most accurate performance they can get. So if you if you have the gun in your right hand in one scene and you accidentally switch it, you know they have to go back and fix that. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually pretty kind of crazy like that. Interesting. I would love to see her come back though for a, a fourth. I want I want it to continue. My other complaint is like, yeah, we saw her complete like start from just a student, and now she's supposed to be like the at the apex of her Tomb Raider abilities. Sure. I now want to see her doing apex stuff as a Tomb Raider. It, I was, it was, I was just thinking that like, isn't wasn't this the origin story? Like, why are we suddenly stopping? Yeah. Interesting. I'm I mean, trying to, I'm it, trying, it, I don't know. It's, I'm just it's all to... going to depend too on how much the game sells. Do you know what I mean? Do you it, really think though that one title in a trilogy, if it doesn't sell that great, is going to kill the thing? If we even if we even know if it is an actual trilogy, I don't know the sales of any of them. I know I know the original one sold well, but uh, Square Enix said that it was like wasn't making enough for them. Something like that. Do you remember that story coming out? I don't remember that. No, it was, but, like, it was like they sold seven million copies, and they're like they're like that wasn't enough for us, or something like that. It was maybe they're putting a lot in though. Like they could be putting more in than we know. The game's gorgeous. It's, it's, it's a beautiful game. See, like maybe they're putting too much in and not getting enough out. Because like Tomb Raider is like I don't know anyone else that bought Tomb Raider. Yeah. Not a single, not a single person. Yeah. I know people that bought that first one, but I don't know anyone else that know, that bought any of the other ones. So I wonder if they slowly got they're selling less and less. You know, and so maybe it's not worth it to make another one. And that's see, sucked. there's that too, yeah, because I'm bored of this. I got bored of the second one. I don't care about the third one, right? And like, I mean, I'm one sample, but like, I wonder if that's some sort of no, like norm. I don't know. A lot of people like to rise, though. Rise was well received. Well received among the people who purchased it. Yeah, kind of like how like the Phantom Pain wasn't actually purchased all that much. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like everyone loves it that bought it. Yeah. But it's not like it, it sold the same numbers as GTA V. This was made by a different studio, too, and I wonder if that kind of See affected that, I things. don't know if they should have did that. It was weird to take like a big, a big franchise and kind of risk it on another studio. It makes sense that they did it on the fourth one. But if you want to at least have a, you know, a consistent trilogy, you'd figure, let's keep everything consistent as we can. Yeah. Maybe they couldn't, but, you know. Well, they probably wanted their good team to work on something new. <laughs> probably should have worked on this. And then get it done and then go work on something else and then give the fourth one to somebody else, you know? <laughs> anyway, new Tomb Raider, please. That's all I want. All right, let's hop into the stories. Jesus Christ, how much time we got here? I'm almost done the podcast, Matt. What time is it? We talked for 40 minutes. It's just about... Well, whatever. This is our intro. 
All right. Uh, do you think that Fortnite is the best place to play on PlayStation? No. <laughs> well, according to uh, Sony CEO uh, Kenichiro Yoshida, he says that PlayStation is the best place to play Fortnite. I remember this. And and that's why they won't do the crossplay apparently. So this is what he says. On cross-platform, our way of thinking is always that PlayStation is the best place to play. Fortnite, I believe, partnered with PlayStation 4 is the best experience for users. That's our belief. But actually, we already opened some game games as cross-platform with PC and some others. So we decide based on what's best for the user experience. My honest and true statement or response to that is he may believe that. I don't know. But he did, no, he doesn't, I don't, he doesn't believe that. Assuming he doesn't, that's what I'm trying <laughs> to say here. Assuming he does not, just say that we don't want to we don't want to share the profits. Just say it, because all you're gonna get, and I haven't checked this, but I I I would estimate that most of the comments are are comment like a con, like a, you know when a IGN or somebody like tweets it out or puts it on a Facebook is like well, most of the comments are going to be like oh like it's it's going to be like the console wars in there you mm-hmm, know what i mean mm-hmm. it's going to be like the console wars in there and it's obviously about profits and i'm sure there's a bunch of comments about how he's just doing it for profits if you're doing it for profits say it i don't want to do it i don't want to share profits we're a business but, well, we want to make it's money it's funny too because it's so transparent that this is a bogus answer. Like, just that's what I mean. Like, because don't don't PR it. Just say it. Say what you're doing. What you're not doing anything illegal. It's not a scandal. Just say I don't want to do it. Because Epic is the one making the game and doing all the cool things. What does PlayStation truly provide that makes it a better place to play? Admittedly, they have some downloadable skins and stuff like that. And I but think they were exclusive. That's not, I think. that's not enough to make me say best place to play. Th- that's the, this is my thing. Is like I'm not saying the other ones are better. But I am saying that I wouldn't mind some crossplay. That's what I'm asking for. And if I could, I would Although, probably use the PlayStation and then cross-play. I hear that the Xbox players aren't as good. Oh, ho, ho. Who told you that one? So a couple of people. I heard online, and then Marty told me. Marty, Marty, Marty told you because I told him that, I think. Oh, jeez. Because I... I he, you he, said it. I, I said it, yeah. Because I got no, three... I, got I, think, three. I, think, I think Marty watched uh, someone play online, too. He did that, too? Yeah, apparently guys said like they were, gonna, like they, they were talking about this. Okay. How, this is an actual thing. The Xbox guys aren't as good at Fortnite as the PlayStation guys. I put it this way, I got my first, when I was not getting many wins, by the way, I only had one solo win at this time. <laughs> I got a solo win in a squads match, so there's that. Mm-hmm. And then I also won three matches in a row, not in a row, in one day, like, I don't know, a month or something ago. See, this this is fascinating. So what's going on here now? Xbox is like known as being like the shooter platform. Yeah, yeah. You know? mm. Maybe all, the, maybe all the, the guys that are really good are on... On uh, what do you call PC? it? PC, not on PC, but on on Halo. Switch. On Halo. No, on Halo. See, there I forgot the Switch even has it. Like, frick, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't. Just don't like. Just don't want an issue a statement. Don't issue a statement. Like Sean Layton shouldn't have said anything because it it sounds to me like he had like Sean Layton had to go to the CEO and the CEO for whatever reason this was some sort of level of decision which he had to make and then the CEO says no. It's like Sean Layton, don't say anything. Don't release a statement because. Now people are going to call your word into question. If you if you say I'm going to look now, like you know what the first thing I thought when I read this was how how true to his word is it when he says we're looking at allowing name changes? I now don't believe him. One hundred percent, I do not believe him now. Plus, he's just in charge of the Americas, right? This is the problem. So, like, like it sounds to me like he had to go to Although, the other. Can't CEO. you change your name in in Japan? Uh, apparently there was some sort of alias system or something. I don't know. Mm. But but like now it's like uh, how much power does Sean Layton have? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He's a, he's definitely I would say he's definitely kept in the loop and everything. But how many things can he make a decision on? Well, he said that last December, so we're coming up on it. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. We, I would got, actually I would actually say zero percent chance. Two two more months before December. I would actually say zero percent chance. Personal opinion, <laughs> but zero percent chance. I'm actually I actually don't care. Like I don't even want him to mention it. Greg's going to mention it. Greg Miller is going to mention it on, on the PSX <laughs> stage again. And I I am confident it's not going to happen. I'm confident. It's probably not. You're right. This it's, is what it's, I, it's now, probably now I not, don't care. But I'm willing to be optimistic and wait until he actually says yes or no this year. If he even if he even comments on it. I wonder if Greg's going to be told before don't there mention was, it. There was that mystery 6.0 update that that uh, didn't do anything. I think that's just because the PlayStation's winding down. This it is, had this, a beta release and everything. This is what, what the, hell the, is this? the PlayStation might be winding down. Mm. It could, man, it could have just been drivers they changed, though. 
it also, it, also, it, also, it also could have had to do with the PlayStation Now and the downloading of the games and stuff. Yeah, they, that could have been a, that could have been a driver change could have been required for yeah. that. Uh, speaking of Fortnite, though, PUBG is apparently going to be coming to the PS4. This comes to us by way of GameSpot. Um, a listing on a foreign ratings board uh, site suggested that the battle royale game was heading to the Sony platform. So I guess we already we always knew that PUBG was was a timed exclusive for Xbox One. Um, but this is uh, this is now I guess more evidence that is coming to other consoles. Do you think PUBG is going to last much longer? Of course, it's still. Oh gonna, yeah, still, no, I don't think there's any question. About of course, that. it's still going to be there, but it seems like no one really talks about it as much since Fortnite like blew up. No, no, and now and now you have Battlefield coming in with the with the battle royale. You got uh, uh, Black Ops Four with Blackout coming in. You know, those are those are some big titles now entering the space. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know whether Blackout is going to go anywhere because a lot of people liked it. The beta. Well, we were talking about this last night while playing Fortnite, and <laughs> Call of Duty is a yearly release. So now you know Fortnite. Like Marty and I are just starting to get in, like really starting to get into the swing of things, winning every night now. Like it, you know what I mean. Like we're getting into the swing of things now. And it taken it's taken this long, really. Um, he got his first solo win yesterday. Like we're killing it, really. Like if at our skill level, we're killing it. But look how long it took. Imagine taking this long to get good at Call of Duty. Imagine if you're a new COD player or even one that's casual. You go to play Blackout and you want to get good at it. It's going to take you the majority of the year to compete with the best. Just just to compete, not necessarily win. Just to compete with them. Put up a fight. And then the game's going to change over. Yeah. That's, I think, that's its main killing point, I think. Mm-hmm. But but Call of Duty players are used to that even in the normal multiplayer. Yeah. You spend all your time, you leveling up, you're getting your your prestige, in, you're getting all your weapons, you're getting all your gear unlocks. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then a new game comes out the next year. They're they're used to that model. But they're not used to battle royale. But it's the same Call of Duty mechanics. Are you saying that the battle royale literally offers something different about the way you shoot at each other? I would say so because I would say so because the snipers they, are still going to take my head off every single time. No, but it's 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 different because in Call of Duty you can be carried all the way to the max level. You can't be carried, with the exception of maybe that maybe Blackout has has a squads mode. I don't I'm not sure, like with multiple players. Yeah. But let's just let's just for for example, like the most serious matches in <coughs> Fortnite and other battle royales are solos, right? Mm-hmm. You play by yourself and you're against 99 other people yeah. generally. Yeah. So let's assume for a second that. There's only it's only one like it's only solos in in blackout. You can't be carried through that. You need to do good. You need to learn the game and do better. You joining random matchmaking with a team of you know however big the team is depending on the mode you're playing. You can be dragged through it. Like some guy but, was showing but, that he but, was he was master prestige and he was like terrible kill death ratio, terrible win loss ratio. He wasn't good at the game like he said it. He said, but I had a hell of a time, a hell of a fun time doing it. Because he wasn't, he's just not a good COD player. Like, but but which Call, is fine. Call of Duty has never been a squad based game. Everyone runs off and does their own thing in multiplayer. Even, I would say even, not, not even the in the sports, even in the squad based. But we're not talking about esports players here. We're talking about the general public latching onto onto a battle royale. Yeah, they're but already, I don't, they're already I don't used think, to going I don't think in. That's where the money is. I think that they. I think the money is in the fact that Fortnite gets watched. Fortnite gets watched, and but wait, 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 watch, we're, we're switching what we're talking about here. No, huh? we're not. Yes, we are. No, we're not. We're talking about we're talking about whether whether battle royale, whether Blackout is going to take off, right? Yeah. What I'm saying is, is I think that a battle well, no, royale. No, no, game, no. The original the original premise here was PUBG. Is is Blackout going to hurt PUBG? In numbers, maybe, but I don't think so because I think that Call of Duty players are going to play Blackout. I don't think that. Battle Royale players are going to play Blackout. That's right. how that's how I'm tying it together with the esports. Fortnite gets watched. Uh, PUBG gets watched, right on mm-hmm. Twitch. There's esports events for both, which is why I think PUBG is going to be fine. There's esports events for both. There are major fans of both. There's a lot of re- standard consumers in both. Call of Duty, same thing. Like before Blackout, there were esports events. There's you know mm-hmm. Call of Duty was, was was a big game. It's a competitive shooter. But I don't think that a, a battle royale game in which you're it's one versus ninety nine can do well when it's only <laughs> going to be virtually supported for a year. It may get f- f- like more updates, but it's going to be the dated game. Fortnite's just going to keep updating. There may be a Fortnite yeah, two but, at but, some point, but yeah. not now and not anytime soon. Yeah. Look how much the game has changed since we played. 
we, we, we were in there for part of the John Wick season. Right. Not even the whole thing. That was only two seasons ago. Yeah. Look how much it's changed. You can't, you can't do that in Blackout. You're going to do two, no, but three I don't, changes, I don't think and, then, and then it's going to... Like, two, three major changes, I mean. But I don't, I don't think that the Call of Duty care, players care about that. But do, do the Call of Duty players care about PUBG? I don't know. I, See, I, don't I, I don't think I don't think so myself. Yeah. Or the or they play both and they don't care. I don't know. I I don't actually know. But but that, there but there could be a lot of Call of Duty players who maybe are a little tired of the multiplayer. Um, they switch over to PUBG, and they they like that. But now that their favorite game Call of Duty has a battle royale, they might go back. That's that's a good one. I heard during the beta they I think they were going like eighty people or something like that, and they pushed it up to eighty eight. And then at the end of the beta, they apparently just pushed it to 100 to see what happens. <laughs> did it break? I don't know. I wasn't following what happened, but I heard this I heard this on another podcast that they, that, that they did that. Because that's a lot of people in a COD match. And I think um, Battlefield only does 64 or whatever they fully support. 64, I think, is yeah. the max you can have in a... Which doesn't really matter that much because when you play Fortnite, like it drops down to like 25 within the first two minutes. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It gets pretty crazy in Fortnite, <laughs> yeah. So... All right, next story here. Uh, Sony announced a PlayStation Classic. This comes to us by Polygon. It's a $100 mini PS1. So this is very much like the uh, NES Classic and the NES SNES Classic. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Classic? Classic. They use I the same name and everything? I'm pretty sure, yeah. So it's a small console. Um, standard size controllers. It has the standard size original PlayStation controllers. Not even a DualShock. It's the just the original. No analog sticks. You know? <laughs> Typical controller. Yeah, yeah, it's a PS1 controller. Which, is, which is hilarious. It's shipping, it's coming with 20 games pre installed. Five of them have been announced, which include Final Fantasy VII, Jumping Flash, uh, Ridge Racer, Type 4, Tekken 3, and Wild Arms. I've literally only played Tekken 3 out of those. Yeah. Are you going to buy one? Uh, I was going to pre order, but then I, I didn't. Um, AC adapters sold separately, by the way. I wasn't being sarcastic earlier. That's yeah. actually a thing. Which is weird. I'm wonder, fuck. I, I, I didn't. I I'll didn't look into it. I only. It. I only saw it on the PlayStation blog. The plug, asterisk. Just plug into my PS4. And well, then. I'm curious <laughs> as to whether it runs off of like hardly anything. I don't know how it works. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, it's launching worldwide on December 3rd, which is the 24th anniversary of the PlayStation's release in Japan. So that's pretty cool. Um. The, you know, there's no actual memory card. It has a virtual memory card in it. But it the, the does have the original, like I think, controllers. So I think these are original PlayStation 1 controllers. Right. They just like, made I new think, ones. Yeah. It's just, so you, uh, you could use your old ones, maybe. I don't, I don't think they're USB. Like, didn't and, and the NES Classic switch to the like, USB port? That I don't know, actually. Or no, they switched to the Wii port, didn't they? That I also don't know. <laughs> anyway, if Adriano was here, he could tell us. But, yeah, I was uh, going to say, Adriano's your Nintendo guy. Yeah. But are there any? I never had. A, I never had a PS One. I have one now, but I never had. I never had one when it came out, and I never played it. That's why I don't much. care. Yeah. Are there any games you can even think of that you might want? I know that there's a lot PS1. of big games out there that that people are expecting to be on the console or hope are on the console. You play, you but, play, but the original Metal Gear Solid would be cool. I used to play a game called Uprising X when I was really young, but I played it on my PS Two, like grade four or five or something, and that that's pretty fun. But like. Like, it's not super memorable. I just remember it because yeah. it was, like, a complex game that I actually figured out. Yeah. I remember my friend had a Yu-Gi-Oh! game, and we were all excited about it, and we went and played it. It didn't work. What? And then I left his house, and then I heard later that his PlayStation caught fire, and he had to put it outside. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's that. Yeah. Maybe that's why they don't include those AC adapters. Good Lord. So my gaming career started with the PS2, so I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in, in a PS2 version of this if they are working on it. See what sucks about this is now that they have the PlayStation Now PS2 games, it's like, well, it's a novelty though. But I have I have three PlayStation Twos. I don't need another one. You don't want a mini one? I have I have a mini. I have the original mini of the mini. Like no, this is ridiculous. Plus only thirty titles. Like I mean, PS2 games are still. I can go twenty. Just, just buy them out. Twenty mm-hmm. titles. Twenty titles. Twenty titles. There you go. So like, I can just go buy. I can just go and literally purchase. Freaking titles. Like, I can just buy PS2 games if I want. I but, have a bunch. But you can buy a lot of the NES Classic games, too, can't you? On the on the stores, on the Wii U and stuff? NES Classic. 
I forget the games that are on there, and I don't know what's oh, on the eShop. Oh, it's like you were saying, like the virtual console? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess. It's, it's the, the novelty. Th- These are novelty things. You're okay. just buying it for fun. You're not actually supposed to be spending your time putting the hours in playing these things right if if it was if it was older maybe but i still have my ps2 stuff so i don't know i'm i'd be more interested in a ps2 though ps2 yeah. classic yeah that's that's my two cents all right there you go um pre-orders are now available well god knows how quick they're gonna freaking go probably are gone hopefully they make more though and like nintendo which stopped and then had to reintroduce it that's interesting i, I wonder how sony's gonna handle this that's interesting kind of expensive man i think it's 130 dollars in canada yeah ah, frick, i ain't doing that there's no way Not for something that old i was telling i was talking to tim about this is we got to remember that the power of these consoles is still increasing now we're starting to get into 3d rendering yes it's old 3d rendering and yes it can run on almost anything but it still requires more than a nest classic you got to remember that right these consoles are still they're still more powerful than each other so the price is going to have to still go up. Well, how much are the NES classics and stuff? Is that like 70 bucks or something? I thought they were 79.99. That's not too far off. I from think 130 or 120 or whatever it is. But do you see what I'm saying though? Could you imagine a PlayStation 2 that's even more now? And then you got to remember here PlayStation 3 was not that Actually, long ago. Yeah, if you if you're paying $150 for an for like a PlayStation 2 classic, that's that's a lot. You're getting up to there where like why would you do that? That's you know? there's the question. And yeah. and like it like if we're playing, if we if we just made PlayStation Two games work on the PlayStation Four, we'll see like, if uh, Nintendo does a uh, N sixty four classic. Tim doesn't think so. I think I think Tim said he did, he doesn't think so. He's a Nintendo guy, and he said that I can't remember what his reason. I think I thought he said it was because it takes too long to render or something. I can't remember. Or like it's it, like it's too advanced. But they could put slightly better hardware in that thing than than what was originally there. No, but see what I'm saying though. Like, like you're saying, oh, let's improve it. Okay, great. Well, the actual hardware improved from the SNES so now we have to match it and then we want to make it better so now it's more money plus now we're starting to get to the territory of go buy a used N64 (laughs) or just buy virtual console games that are N64 yeah but again you're you're paying for the novelty yes so that has some value to it yes but at 130 it's like I don't think look at a used PS3 PS4 rather I want one for that price, but I don't know how much higher I would go. Definitely not two hundred is way out. I, would, I think I it's would, over hundred. I think I'm out. Yeah, I think because I mean that's fair, but 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 I'm I'm a big PlayStation guy, so I think Adrian pre-ordered it too, didn't he? he may I, have. Well, he said he was going to buy one. I don't know what his status is on it. Yeah. yeah. All right, and our final story. There's been a Sony week. Um, a sunny week, a sunny, sunny Sony week. week. PlayStation Now has added downloading of PS4 and PS2 games. So if you don't know what PlayStation Now is, it was Sony's streaming service. So you could only okay. stream the games prior to this update. And they had a bunch of PS4 titles on there. They had, I think they have PS3 titles and PS2 titles. Okay. And you can stream them all. They're now allowing you to download it. So much like Netflix has the ability to download certain titles. You can now download, I think, I think close to all, if not all. PS2 games and, and and a lot of PS4 games, or am I doing that backwards? Well, there's there's a there's a collection of downloadable titles that are PlayStation 4, PlayStation 2. Yeah. Just think of just think of like Netflix, where some stuff's available for download and some stuff isn't. Yeah. But the fact that this technology is now available okay, so is very good. Almost all PS4 games in in the service, including Bloodborne, God of War 3 Remastered, NBA 2K16, and Until Dawn, will be available for download. In addition to the PS Now lineup of classic PS2 games remastered for PS4, this feature will gradually be rolled out to PS Now subscribers over the next couple of days. Um. So there you go, and it's the same. I think the same price for the subscription, and you don't need playstation plus to play the online games i think that's included in the playstation now subscription i think so you could play like bloodborne co-op yeah this this is smart yeah of sony yeah this is smart get get fight fight microsoft fight them back hopefully hopefully this is a sign that they're now thinking we got to catch up to, to game pass yeah this is what i'm saying they got to fight them they got to fight them because they're, they're gonna get their ass kicked and this might be why they were continually adding i don't know how well PlayStation now is doing for them but this might be why they were continually adding new new titles and stuff i'm telling you right now if they if they do i see fuck i was gonna say if they do the they gotta like, get the like ps3 EA, games like ea premiere but i don't care about first party titles yeah but i would i would definitely do that 100 percent. i care about microsoft first party titles 
It's odd. What do you mean? It's odd that you like. I'm Xboxes. kind of a Microsoft fanboy a bit though, yeah. a little bit. Well, I like. I, I want. I want to try see of Thieves. I never tried it. Yeah. I would never buy it, but I buy Game Pass and do that. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of other games on there that I would definitely use. So yeah, Sony could easily incorporate that into this service though. To say yeah. all first party PlayStation titles are now day one in PlayStation Now, yeah. which you can stream or download day one. Yeah. That'd be that'd be pretty good. And I would probably do that because I don't have internet fast enough to stream the games, but I can definitely download them and play them. See, it's just it's just smarter to have the download anyway. Like even if even if everyone was on perfect uh fiber. Yeah. Like sometimes the internet goes down, or hell, sometimes you go to a cottage, like or your, your router blows up, or something. Your yeah. router blows up, or like honestly, people people go places, you know. <laughs> and sometimes they'll sometimes they'll go somewhere and they'll just have a hotel mm-hmm. where they just plug in their freaking console. I'm going to the Adirondacks this week or ne- next week rather, and I need to download shows and stuff. There you go. You know, because there's no internet up there. And that's normal. Like that's a normal thing that people do. Mm-hmm. Planes, if you go on a flight, you know. Yeah. So Actually, come on. going on vacation to a remote place where there's no internet access, you get a lot of stuff done. I caught up on uh, Narcos last year. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. I downloaded it all before. It's weird that you caught up on something that's on the internet normally <laughs> because well, the internet wasn't there. That That's weird. When, that's I'm, when really I'm home, weird. I waste a lot of time watching YouTube or just going on Facebook and just looking at the same stuff I've looked at all day. And I'm just like, this is mindless stuff. And I know it's, I know I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be doing this and I have other things I could be doing. But it's just there because I have access to it, right? Yeah. But when I'm out in, out in the Adirondacks, I finish books. And I watch catch up on TV shows. You know, it's great. One one guy I know became a minimalist, and uh, he was saying he was saying something about this is gonna be a long episode, but whatever. Uh, he was saying that he was saying that he got ended up finishing like three or four books, and he said he literally found like sometimes upwards of six hours a day. <laughs> he's like, he's like, honestly, like he's not fucking around. He's yeah. like, on, he's like, sometimes it's six hours, and he's like, that's that's fucked. Yeah, like that's a lot. Mm-hmm. I will say that, like, I had that app timer, uh, like it showed up. I don't know. I'm on a key two now, so I'm not really sure whether that's a key two feature or an Android feature. I'm not sure, but I saw like the app timer yeah. where it tells you how long I've been on apps, and like, like some of them are fucked. Now, admittedly, though. A lot of them, it's like, oh, I turned on YouTube, fell asleep for three and a half hours, and then it's like, oh, you've been on for like fucking four hours. I'm like, no, I haven't. I'm like, oh wait, I fell asleep, and it was running. That happened with me. Um, I because uh, Apple just introduced like the, the same thing, and uh, I put a limit on my social media, right? And you, then, you you put a limit on it. Yeah, I, I have a limit on it right now, and um, I, I I didn't know how much I normally spend on it because I haven't I hadn't like logged enough time. Yeah, yeah. And so I just set it for like two hours. Yeah. And I accidentally just left Instagram open on my phone. My phone would just face up, you know? Yeah. And I would just leave it sitting there, not even doing it, and was still counting those hours I was on Instagram. What what it, uh, what does it do if you hit a limit? It, like, you, you can't access those, like, apps. Can you just, can you get you around could, it? You, you can turn it off, yeah. Okay, well, then. Yeah. There you go. That's not too bad. But so, I think I've now calculated, I think I spent, like, four hours on social media. A day? Yeah. And so, I set it to, like, 3.30, and so I'm just going to kind of slowly roll myself back, you know? I have a... a Real, real brief aside. I have a real bone to pick with that, with that mentality. I understand addiction and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, like in four, four hours might be a lot, mm-hmm. but I hate the people where they do the extreme, where they're like, "Well, social media is toxic. I'm getting the hell out of here." It's like, well, "No, hang on a minute here." Yeah, it's addicting, and you're going through a timeline. What are you looking at though? Reading articles, looking at like pictures. Is I don't know how bad that behavior is. It's not like I'm like taking a drug or something. You know, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, like people get too fired up about new things. I can, I can see it for like public figures who like may get a lot of crap, you know, yeah. who, who get like death threats and stuff for just saying something like they could say good morning and the first comment can just be like F you. Yeah. I can understand that. You want to get away from that for a bit. That's a lot of negativity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially even the news people want to get away from because a lot of, a lot of social media is used for news gathering. Yeah. Um, people want to get away from that too. That's fine. Like, but, but I it, understand it, trying to unplug if you want to take a break, sure. But yeah. the guys who are extreme, they're like, oh, social media is the worst thing ever to hit, ever hit humans. No, but I think, that's wrong. I think <laughs> what Facebook and, and like these social media things originally were was pretty okay. People would post pictures of their vacations, their their, their babies, their, their pets. Yeah, yeah. They, they just share what they were doing. That's fine. But yeah. it's once like people started weaponizing it. So to speak. Like using it for death threats, using it to swear at people. Not, not even necessarily that, just like pushing an agenda of sorts. You know? My Twitter feed is full of just political stuff. You know? Oh, and, fuck. And, yeah, and, that, and that's, so, that's bad, yeah. And so I think that's where social media goes off the rails. 
you know. You know what actually is super interesting about when you mentioned the political thing is I I unfollowed all the political stuff on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I used to be on there. And I used to get pissed off. Like I used to go on Facebook and I'd read something that would that would be against my view and I'd be pissed off the whole day. Like <laughs> right. like like pissed. Literally like, triggered. Like literally <laughs> triggered. Yeah, I'm like yeah. I'm mad now. And I'm like those fucking like whoever did this, you know, <laughs> damn these people who did this because they did it this way and I don't want that. Like you know what I mean? Stupid. I literally one day was like, you know what? Fuck it. And I just unfollowed like all the pages, and I was like, if I miss it, I'm just gonna refollow them. Didn't don't care. Right. So yeah. it, th- I think that's a good test. If it pisses you off and you, and you, t- you <laughs> take it away, you can always go back. You take it away. Don't block it, but take it away. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't. And you don't miss it, then who gives a fuck? All right, let's hop into the query corner before we go over The philosophical here. corner, you mean. This just in, though. Fox has officially announced a uh, third Kingsman film for 2019. Did the second one do well? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like it. I can't remember what the hell the second one is. The whole like Kingsman thing gets like destroyed, and they got to go to Texas or wherever they went. Spoiler there. alert! Come on, now. it was in the trailers. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Did you not watch it? No, I think I did. I just don't remember which one was which. It's been a long time. All oh, right. it was that. It was uh, with uh, uh, isn't Elton John in it? Yeah. <laughs> was that? No, she was trying to like she was trying to say I think Elton John was in there or something. Oh. But yeah, Elton. I think Elton John was in it, and then yeah. and, and, the, and Julianne Moore. That's yeah. it. I was trying to I could not remember her name. Yeah. yeah, I did like that weird little village she had. <laughs> yeah, I thought cool. that was yeah. cool, but that was fine. Uh, all right, query corner, philosophical corner. Woo! Query corner. Changes in the industry. Too many games. You say, Matt. Take it away. Changes in the industry. Too many. Okay, yeah. So this is a. This is kind of a. a an. It, it came up because of this holiday season, but but it it kind of goes without. Kind of goes for everything. So Marty and I were talking, and we and I think you were in a few of these conversations because we've had these conversations several times, playing Fortnite. And one of the things is is we were talking like, oh, we gotta do this season, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. Now Fortnite's pretty forgiving in terms of that type of stuff. Like you got like quite a bit of time to do it. They give you challenges. It's easy to get through the season for the most part, right? You got you you can buy tiers. I mean, if you want to put money into it and stuff like that. So it's it's forgiving in terms of earning the season or slash the battle passes uh, or rewards, right? Pretty forgiving, and it's three. It's essentially three months, you know, give or take. So, okay, fair enough. Now, one of the issues is that we were talking. We were like, "Oh, this this game season's coming up. The holiday season, game season's coming up. We got Fallout, we got Red Dead, we got Battlefield, we got Spider Man just came out. Like, we got this all this big list, and I'm sure I'm missing stuff. Mm-hmm. We got all this stuff coming out. Assassin's got Creed. Assassin's Creed. We got like, and then going into early next year, we got like Division Two. We got Days Gone. We got a whole like whack of sh- like whack of shit essentially <laughs> yeah. coming in here. Like this is like this is some serious business in terms of content, the amount of content. Mm-hmm. So one of my one of our things was, what are we going to do next season? The Fortnite season only has a few days left. Are we going to invest in the Battle Pass? Now I'm only going to invest in the Battle Pass if I like the rewards. That's a, that's a criteria. Let's assume I like the rewards. Am I going to do it? I don't know. Look how much time we put into Fortnite. But in, in with that being said, look how long we've been playing Fortnite. How how many other games have I played on my console since then? I played a little bit of Overwatch, mm-hmm. probably like six hours, mm-hmm. maybe over several months, like nine months. What else have I been playing? Some stuff on Xbox with like my other buddies, right? With like uh, Alex and Nate, been playing with those guys, right? With my Xbox buddies. But if I'm if I'm on my PlayStation, I only play Fortnite for <laughs> right. the most part. Yeah. So now it's like, and I'm not bored of Fortnite. I'm not bored of it. So this is my thing is, is at what point, I, I guess my question is more so, you know how you were saying there's so many games and there's so many online communities. Is there enough players? I guess my question is, how do you choose? How do you choose which ones? And also, do you think that other people are experiencing this same thing? So I'll just, I'll just do a, a brief explanation of what I mean. So right now we're trying to like figure out whether we're going to prioritize the Fortnite season the whole schedule of them releasing Red Dead Online after Red Dead 2, uh, you know, screws over my Fallout mm-hmm. thing, so I'm not doing that. We got the freaking Fallout beta. I'm playing Spider-Man right now. Some people, uh, like, <laughs> the, I got my my uh, Xbox crowd wants to play uh, Battlefield 5. They want to play freaking Red Dead, maybe, like some of them do. Like, it's a whole smorgasbord of stuff. And I'm not complaining because it's like, you know, it's a good problem to have. It's like, if you didn't have anything coming out, you know, it's not good for the industry, but... Like I said, I'm still not bored of Fortnite. So these well, are industry changes. This, that, this yeah, never happened before. Yeah, this is, this is my concern, okay? 
I'm going to speak in an extreme here. Okay. okay? Just to kind of show you what my, what my point is. Yeah, yeah. I can picture a day when there's no new games coming out. Where Fortnite lasts forever. Okay. Yeah. It updates every season. There's changes that happen throughout the season. They mm-hmm. add new things, new characters, new skins, new new maps. The map changes. You know, at one point, it looks like the whole map's going to completely evolve, right? With the amount of changes they're doing to this map. Yeah, but there's only already so seen, many OG things left. We've already seen like two or three major sections get major changes done to them. I and there's there's very few locations that are untouched. So this game is going to last forever to a point where you won't see a Fortnite two. It's just going to be Fortnite Infinity, and it will go on forever. Yeah. And uh, uh Fallout seventy six. They said this game is. Plan to last forever, they said. They and said, he said. Oh, they did actually say forever. And he said he wasn't joking around. Like, he wasn't being facetious about it. This game's going to last forever. I thought he said a couple of years. Jesus. They're, they're planning for it to just be a multiplayer game forever. Kind of like, like an MMO. You know, look how old <sighs> freaking WoW is. So if every game wants to do this model because of how much money it makes, eventually, and again, I'm talking in extremes here, just to get my point across, there might be no new games coming out. Every developer has their big title that everyone plays, and we all have like five big games we all play for the rest of our, our lives here. You know what's That's crazy? That's what I was talking about when, like, the, how, is there enough players to fill all these games? And eventually, you're gonna, there's not going to be enough new games because no one's playing those. Do you think that the model for the traditional games, so a traditional yearly release, something like Call of Duty or bi yearly or every other year, I don't know whether that's bi yearly, but anyway, every other year with Battlefield, do you think that they're going to adapt or change? Well, you were talking about it, how, how, like, if you're investing your time into Blackout on Black Ops 4, yeah, and it changes to a new game next year, maybe the fans will like Blackout so much that they'll want to continue playing it and want to keep developing that character. Yeah. You know? Um, they could either, like, find out a way to transfer over your progress to each game, maybe, or just have a Black Ops or, or Call of Duty Blackout game. I, I thought they might separate release from it the multiplayer. free to play. Yeah. Yeah, it might be free to play. That would be actually really smart for them. Now, this was this was something that we had discussed. Was I actually want them to remove the Call of Duty names and maybe still have an annual release, but you don't you don't. It's not traditional. So what I mean by that is you have an app on your PlayStation called Call of Duty. You fire it up, and literally it says next week the new campaign's coming out. You want to buy it? No, don't worry about it. Just keep playing. Same hub. You go to multiplayer. You go quick match. It's literally World War Two. Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, it's all of them. It doesn't matter. It just takes you to a genre. Mm-hmm. So essentially they would like have like an engine, like let's say they start today. They have like the newest engine with all the latest, t- latest tweaks and they have like different genres. They got World War II in there. They got Future, Modern. They got freaking, you know, weird alien stuff, whatever they want to do because they had like the zombies, they got the aliens, all that. Everything's there all in one big app. Mm-hmm. You want to buy the latest campaign? Go for it. You want to buy the latest map pack? Go for it. That's how they do it. And it's just it's just Call of Duty. Yeah. It's same with Battlefield. Like I'm not done with like or I mean like I am done with it because I played it a lot, but I'm not bored again of Battlefield One. Like it's like Battlefield One is still super fun. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice? I mean, they kind of have it with the far left menu with all the all the battlefields. Wouldn't it be nice if it was just a Battlefield game though, and you could just oh I don't want to buy the hardline DLC, but I want to download I want to buy the hardline maps, and I just buy those specifically. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder how much more sales they would get because people are going to be able to save money by buying specifically what they want. They might actually end up buying more. Yeah. Because they might later on be like, oh, I'll buy that campaign later. Whereas before, when it's all in one big price, they're like, I don't want to spend 80 bucks. So, like, I wonder where the where the traditional annual games are going to go now then. But you're, you are, I, I think that's a really good, interesting point is, okay, let's say Follow is like this. Okay, fine. They, they're gonna. They Bethesda said they're gonna come back. You know, go back to single single player with something like um, Starfield, and then I assume Elder Scrolls is single player. I don't know whether that's been reported on. Don't freaking quote me on that. <laughs> I don't know, but because um, I I didn't look at much Elder Scrolls six. Stuff. I would have to think so because of Elder Scrolls Online, though. I was gonna say that too. No. Um, but I think for some reason I think there's gonna be some multiplayer in there. I. Th- the way that they presented it at E3, I feel like there's some social or co-op features. I would be there. happy with a co-op game. That would be great. That's what I. That's <clears> what I think it might be. Just a co-op game, just like yeah. a four-player co-op yeah. game. Yeah. Um. That that's that's a speculation though. But like fucking Fallout seventy six. Like if it's like Fortnite, 
There it goes. Like there goes Fortnite for me. <laughs> like like ser- seriously though. Yeah. Like there goes but Fortnite for me, and there goes everything else. Here's what's amazing though. We were, right. we're seeing a lot of these developers not abandon single player games, but but put them as less of a priority. Um, where studios are, every game has a multiplayer aspect to it now, or that is the focus of the game. You know, but then PlayStation Spider Man came out. It's the fastest selling PlayStation exclusive. Ever mm-hmm. sold three point three million units in the first three days. Probably because it's fucking fantastic. And before that, God of War was the fastest selling multiplayer or, or sorry, um, PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, yeah. And before that, Horizon Zero Dawn was the fastest selling, you know, exclusive. So single player games are there's still an appetite for them. I think they just have to be good. They have. I think people expect a higher quality from single player games now. Do you think that there's less of a crossover? Do you think that there is? Do you think that the guys who are playing single player are the guys who are specifically, and there's a large number of them, not playing Fortnite and not playing Call of Duty online? No, I think I think there's just I think there are people like me. Where you want to do both? Oh yeah. That's interesting. Like there's definitely a there's definitely a crossover. Yeah. I'm curious as to how many people are like that'd be an interesting uh like um I don't know, poll or something to run as to how many people how many people are just doing single player. And one of the most anticipated games is a single player game for PlayStation, which is The Last of Us Part Two. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a good point. I'm not. I, I'm wondering why these other devs, unless there's just more money in it. Yeah. You know, because freaking uh, Fortnite, they had like 78 million people playing or something like that. Some crazy number. Yeah, in August, right? The big, yeah. The, it was their biggest month ever. Yeah. Some crazy number. So you just make more money with those multiplayer games. You make more money because it's because it, it it breaks up the cost. I'm not paying eighty dollars all in one sitting typically. Mm-hmm. I'm paying like twenty, and then I'll play for like a few months and be like, oh, I'll play another twenty. You yeah. know what I mean? And it had yeah. keep, that keeps happening, so that's pretty standard, I think. And even if it's just like me, I, I put like fifty dollars into Overwatch. I put like technically sixty dollars into Fortnite. Um, if if everyone just did that, they'd be making a ton of money too. You know, it's a good it's a good question, but like to go back to that single player comment is the take two CEO or somebody remember he was saying that single player games aren't going anywhere. And I think we can kind of see that with, you know, everyone was like, Oh, Rockstar doesn't release games anymore. They just do like things like GTA online. Yes, they do. But if Jeff Keighley's comments are as (laughs) true as they are, and the only reason why I'm speculative is because he didn't get to play it for hours. Maybe there's more repetition than he realized, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe there is more, but Let's say it isn't, and it's super alive, and it stays that way, and it's not repetitive for even for hours of play. That is some serious single player investment, like that. Like no wonder why they didn't weren't making games. If they did that big of a change for open world games, and that's a single player open world game, that's a big ass fucking like like rev- like revolution. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's a huge investment of time to make those systems work like that, and then they're gonna release the online later. If they were super concerned about making money, I think they would be releasing the online first. They'd be like, oh, we're going to do the story later. You know, there's no DLC for GTA 5 and that type of thing, and that sucks. Mm -hmm. And sure, like, certainly some of their dev time that was in single player is now in multiplayer. But I think that Rockstar is right in saying, like, you know, realistically, people could still be playing, or probably, and guarantee still are, the single player in GTA 5, especially kids just driving around running with cops and stuff, right? That's a big thing kids used to do. Um, but like, think like if 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 Red Dead Two is as big as the, as is, is as big and as revolutionary as it is, that is that is a it is proof that single player is still huge. They would not put that much investment. They would just do a GTA with with horses and guns. Yeah, they would not do any investment in the systems if they wanted to half ass it and just get money from Red Dead Online. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I I think I think there's I think the people that are freaking out about Single player, but I think we're still in a transition here. You I still think, think they're in a transition, like even now? Well, even even Bethesda themselves, who had the last year had the big "We care about single player games." Yeah, they come back and announce a multiplayer only, like really game. Um, and the Dishonored is in trouble, a single player game. And uh, well, we'll, Dishonored's in trouble due to sales, not to because of multiplayer. But no, but that's 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 part of it. People aren't buying single player games either. Okay. I, I don't think that Dishonored is as big of a title as they thought. I think that's ended up what happened. It's there. not, but Dishonored's in trouble. Wolfenstein is in trouble. They announced another one, but I think that's just them kind of hanging on to it. Doom. Doom Doom was okay. Yeah. I think Doom's doing great, actually. Yeah. I haven't seen numbers. I think I think EA's kind of given up on single player games. I think their focus now is all multiplayer because they're all about the money, you know? 
What is EA doing these days? Battlefield Five. There's a, there's a question because the thing the thing with seventy six and this is what this is my defense as a fanboy, but so take that as you will. But this oh, is anthem, my de- this is too. my defense. What's that? Anthem EA is doing Anthem too, the, which is a multiplayer game. Multiplayer, but like division like, so it's kind of it multiplayer ish in my in my book. That's just how I categorize but it's it. It's meant to be played multiplayer, but you can play single player. Like I used to play division single player. It's yeah. fine. Um, the thing is, is like okay with what was I saying with with the the defense for for, for Bethesda is that it they usually take several years like I don't know let's just say ballpark 5 years between titles mm-hmm. in a franchise a single player franchise specifically this was 2 years and it's a multiplayer game that's essentially looks like Fallout 4 all they're basically doing is saying like hey we released Fallout 4 here's a spin off that's all multiplayer that's my defense for it because if you think about it if if they waited 5 years or something like between Follow New Vegas. I don't know. How, I, don't, I can't remember exactly when they were all released. But like, say, like even let's just say three. That's a bit even bigger gap. Three to four. If they did four, that that same gap, and then seventy six, then we're like, mm, maybe they're going out. Out. But, but it's I'm a just saying, off, wait, you know? wait till they see those spreadsheets of all the cash that's coming in from seventy six. I think they're already seeing that with uh, Follow Shelter. I think that's a, that's a taste. I think it's not multiplayer, but it's games as a service. I think that's a taste. But the easy way, easiest way to do that on a console is. With a multiplayer game, yes. So well, I think, maybe, I that, think, maybe that's why they want to keep it. But alive. What I'm saying is, when when Dishonored's not selling well, Wolfenstein isn't selling well, and maybe only Doom is the one that's really successful. And then 76 is just raking in the dough with with. They're going to slowly shift that way. I think it's inevitable. I think that they are big enough. See, to have a multiplayer team, Sony has interest in making single player games because it sells their consoles. That's that's what, a fair point. What's actually. Bethesda's interest in making single player games? There's not one really, other there, than there other is than, other than the fan, other than fan, fan service. Yeah, but I think the fans can be easily coerced. We're going to be playing Fallout seventy six. We're not going to not play a multiplayer game from Bethesda. Do you know what I mean? Well, but in that same breath, though, I didn't not I didn't not buy Prey because it's single player. Yeah, so you're, gonna, you're still going to buy games you like. Yeah, I think I think the thing with Bethesda is they don't even hit another license that as that is as viral. I yeah. think that that's what they're hoping Starfield is. Yeah. I think they need a third. They sold me on it. Man. Major license so, Starfield. Yeah, that little like this is that little video. I loved it. I'm gonna I'm gonna play that game. Like yeah. it's that that's there's no doubt there. For All right, sure. Matt, we're running late here. You're getting old. Yeah, I'm getting old. I want some pizza. I want some pizza. Yeah, okay. Go get some get, get some of those oversized Panzerottis. That like when they cook oh, them, it's like it's like you bite a little hole in it, and then like it's like a smokestack yeah. pumping out of, <laughs> of steam. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, we stream on Twitch um, every Wednesday, most Wednesdays, I guess. And we're also on the YouTube. If you can't catch this Twitch stream, yeah, we we, yeah, we upload the streams to to the YouTube. We also upload the podcast to the YouTube, as well as most podcast apps. <laughs> so get your fill there. All right. See ya. Follow us on the socials. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>